Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are about 15, 20 seconds away from showtime. So if you would, please take your places. I'd like to thank those of you who are here. Uh, we appreciate you coming out on a dark and dreary night. Uh, this is a town hall meeting in North Augusta, the purpose of which is to share um, some information that we have that is hopefully of interest to the North Augusta community and also to receive input from anyone uh, desiring to give us some input. We typically uh, begin our meeting with a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. So at this time, I would like to invite each of you to um, take a moment and reflect on what's spiritual to you. Okay, thank you. Now, if we would stand and pledge allegiance. I don't see a flag, but we'll pretend we have one. We'll uh, open the meeting by uh, I'm going to ask Superintendent Lawrence to uh, give us a little update on the happenings in North Augusta on behalf of the school district. Mr. Lawrence. Thank you, Dr. Bradley and members of the board. Uh, we just have a few things that we, we'd like to share, and I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Traxler and Dr. Murphy um, to share some things about our building projects that, that are going on in this area and, uh, and also about some of the um, funding mechanisms that we have that are making those things possible. So uh, just, a, just a brief uh, discussion of that, and, and of course, uh, we'll be able to answer any questions that the board has and certainly that the community has. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, Mr. Lawrence, members of the uh, community. Uh, I apologize in advance for not having our slides up. We're still dealing with a little bit of technical difficulty, but we're going to try to use our words to describe the wonderful happenings in this area right now. I'll begin with uh, Belvedere Elementary. Belvedere Elementary, uh, the project is budgeted at $10.7 million, and we're currently in the process of adding 22 classrooms in a two-story addition. There will also be a new front entryway and a new bus drop-off area. Now, we'll be done with the building additions in August, and we'll be clearing that site as early as November the 30th, so work is well underway. The parking area has been graded, storm drain lines are completed, and the retention pond has already been grassed in. We have masonry walls continuing to be installed, as well as mechanical rough in, and we're going through our daily uh, inspections and grout pours now. The second floor work has already begun, and we're attempting to dry in the roof, and metal studs for the interior walls have been installed. Again, this project is scheduled for completion this August. It is on time and well within budget. Moving on to Hammond Hill. Hammond Hill just recently started. This project is roughly $15.2 million and has been divided into two phases. The first phase will add 24 classrooms, a new parent drop-off, and a new bus drop-off area. And the secondary phase will also add a kitchen, a cafeteria, and a computer lab area. Phase one is scheduled to be completed in January of 2022, and phase two is currently projected at May of 2023. The, the latest news and development will be the Highland Springs Elementary and Middle School project that is scheduled to break ground in July of this year. The building should be ready to open by December of 2022. It's going to be located uh, near Old Sudlow Lake and Belvedere Clearwater Road just before Highway 520. It will be a K through 8 school with approximately 750 middle school and opening with 500 elementary school once it is come online. This school will be built for approximately $40 million. 
And last but not least is the beautiful North Augusta High School. Uh, this $16 million project was recently completed and we have uh, a wonderful new gym addition as well as auxiliary gym. In the gym, we feature a new uh, video screen that is the, literally the talk of the town right now, it, and it's gonna be showcased when they have an upcoming pageant. An excellent storefront and concessions area, and a first class weight room area. We have also were able to add in new fine arts areas such as chorus, band, and, uh, well, chorus, band, and orchestra. And that's all I have for the capital projects for this area. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Dr. Bradley, board members, Mr. Lawrence. I had a nice slide or two that I was going to, <laughs> to share that would probably help visualize things better than I could speak to. Um, but we wanted to give a quick update on, on sales tax because without the penny sales tax, this facility wouldn't have been possible or it might have been possible 10 or 15 or 20 years down the road in addition to some of our other facilities. Um, a lot of folks have had concerns. What's, what impact has COVID had on penny sales tax? And, and actually, if it's, if it's slowed it down some, um, then we have some, some bright times ahead because the sales tax collections continue to be strong. They continue to grow every year. Um, we update the info on our website regularly, and if you've ever looked at the follow your penny link, there's, there's a two-month lag in there, and that's between the between the time that the state collects it and they process it and they send it to us. So the latest info that we have right now is for December of 2020. Uh, but that month marked the highest month's collection since the inception of the penny sales tax. It was uh, 2.4 million and change. So it's, in December typically is a strong month. November is. is as uh, folks make their, their Christmas purchases, you typically see a, see a little decrease in January because everybody spent their money in, in November and December, but things continue to be strong. They have been strong uh, despite the COVID closure, despite not having the Masters last spring and some other local events going on that, that typically bring some monies in. Um, just a recap of the penny sales tax, it was passed in November 2014. It's for 10 years, it doesn't auto renew. Um, it sunsets in February of 25. So it actual collections commenced in March of 2015. So we're right at six years into it. The projections that we use were per the legislation were based on projections from the state and it projected 189 million over the over the 10 years and of that 189 million or of what whatever we end up collecting 10 percent goes to property tax relief 90 percent goes to projects today we're we're pleased to report that every single year we've exceeded projections um, and this is i think this is something that you'll likely see on our website soon because it's it's good info to share but our first full year is the was the 2015-16 school year we exceeded projections by a million dollars the next year, a million and 26,000. In 1718, we exceeded projections by 1.4 million. 1819, by 2 million 194,000. 1920, by 2.6 million. And this year, to date, we're already 2.3 million ahead of pace. So we're, we're on pace to finish this year three, three and a half million ahead of projections. And, and each year, 
these projections that we have, there's an incremental step. So we're, we're not only working with a projection that's increasing, but we're going far and above um, over that. We've received the question, uh, what happens with any, any additional monies over and above? And again, it, it still has that same 10% 90% split, and that's, that's real important to understand that we have five approved projects or the property tax relief that it could go to. Um, again, I, I apologize that I don't have a slideshow here. I, I want to make sure I hit all of the high points. I, I will mention too that uh, after a little hiatus because of, of COVID, we've started having our oversight committee meetings again. Our next one is scheduled for June. We had one in early February. So this is a, a group of citizens that uh, they, they volunteered their time and, and really uh, volunteered about 10 years of their time to meet periodically, to hear construction updates, to hear financial info, what the collections are, and see how we're spending funds, and, and really helping ensure and oversee that, that we're being good stewards of dollars and we're spending things as we should. Um, so, um, we continue to have those about quarterly. We have resumed and hopefully we'll, we'll continue to have and we, we anticipate having good reports out of that group. So, I think that's it for sales tax. I'll be happy to, to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you. Mr. Chair, that, that's all of the things we wanted to share uh, tonight. Okay. At, at this time, we'll uh, open the uh, mic to uh, anyone who has a statement to make or um, who wishes to express uh, something to the board, questions to the board. The only rule is that we uh, typically like to keep the comments to about five minutes, give or take since it's such a small crowd. And we ask that you not uh, personalize your, your remarks. Please state your name and uh, give us an idea of what it is you are here to speak about. And I think that we would like to record, if we haven't already done it, your name, address, phone number. Okay. My name is Melinda Ball, and all I'm here to do is say thank you. I want to say thank you for putting our schools back in school, putting our kids back in school full time. I just want to say thank you for letting us go full time to school. Thank you very much. We really appreciate all the efforts that you put into listening to all of our, our comments at the previous board meetings. And from the bottom of our heart, we are very grateful for all your, all your efforts and your decision to put our kids back in school full time. So thank you again. Thank you so much. I would piggyback on that just a bit and say I think that we had a total of uh, seven students with COVID and four employees. So our yes, incident rate is extremely low since we've gone back. Anyone else like to uh, say something to us? We're about to set the record for the shortest meeting in the board's history. Anyone else? Board members, any of you have anything, any song or dance you want? Yeah? I, I see a hand up at the end. Is that Jason? Mr. C Mr. Crane. I'd just like to thank uh, Mr. Murphy and, and his staff for opening up their campus to us. Uh, we appreciate it. And Ms. Ball and everyone that came out, we appreciate y'all coming out and everybody on the live stream. Thank y'all. Um, Ms. Reinhardt Jackson. Thank you. Um, as always, I just want to say thank you to all of Aiken County Public School District. Um, sure. You all are doing a phenomenal job. 
um, with what we've had to face this year. So I personally like to say thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, we didn't come prepared to uh, present any information other than that which we've already presented. Uh, so if there's nothing further, uh, we'll entertain a, uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? second. There's been a motion to adjourn, second by Ms. Reinhardt Jackson. All in favor, please raise your hand. That's everyone. Thank you for coming. And we stand adjourned. <laughs>